Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Hollywood Mechanics. I know the audio complete crap and we're not going to force you to sit there and listen to that. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to reshoot this, but it's going to be a little bit more, I guess, handy cam style because I just don't have the time. We've got too much going on and, um, trying to crank out new products and you wouldn't believe how long it takes just to get people <laughs> that say they're going to do something for you. Like, oh, I'll make this CAD thing. I'll do this thing. And it'll be uh, two weeks. And then six weeks later, you're sitting there going, dude, what is going on? And that is every project. Um, Ferrari parts just still not being caught up from their shutdown and it's, I mean everything is a mess right now so but I wanted to get you guys uh, opportunity to buy this tool because even though I made a video showing you how you can make it a few years ago um, only one person has uh, from what I understand actually attempted it and while they were successful uh, they did completely blow up my phone until they were blocked and then blow up my email and then comment on my YouTube video. If you go watch it, you can see the comments of, yeah, okay, my hydraulic suspension fault is gone, but now I have other faults. It's like, okay, so the tool worked then, your hydraulic suspension fault is gone. Yeah, but the air shock fault is on now. Well, that's a Rivian that has air shocks and hydraulics, so it sounds like a new problem. You see that the air shocks won't attempt to operate until you fix the hydraulics. So, Again, my tool worked. I'm sorry. Uh, and this is what makes it so hard to put out information is it's just like a uh, bug light for leeches that just want to uh, give me more for free. Why, why do I have to evacuate the whole system? Why can't I just do one accumulator at a time? And it's like, dude, I, okay, we're not going to, we're going to, we're going to fix all that. We're going to teach you about how hydraulic systems work. So uh, this is our tool right here. Uh, it looks, I think, professional enough for a shop. Uh, you can make all this again. We've we will link our video to how to do that in this video I'm not trying to rip you off uh, McLaren sells a box that that performs the suspension bleed tool uh, function for about $13,000 you can buy it directly off of a Chinese person who's stolen it from the factory or or dealing it on the side for 6500 we're gonna cut even that price in half at 3250 that's what we're selling this for um, but you could assemble this for a thousand dollars worth of parts or at least that's the way that we did it and then the time and energy to have things cut into CAD and laser scanned and cut out and uh, all um, designed I mean you're welcome to, to look at the other video and make something of your own but what is this machine here what do you see well what we've got in the uh, the Takata suspension system which is shared by the 720s uh, McLaren's uh, I think a couple other models use it and then the Rivians specifically it's a hydraulically um, assisted suspension and each shock has an accumulator which is basically like an air spring it has um, a bladder with probably nitrogen on one side of the bladder and then the hydraulic fluid on the other side and that hydraulic fluid or the hydraulic circuit kind of acts as a compression and rebound controller the car can uh, use a hydraulic pump uh, in the Rivian's case, a, a specific pump for the suspension. In the McLaren case, it also powers the power steering. But um, you can use that pump to create pressure to stiffen up the shocks. When uh, uh, upward force is driven onto the passenger side, it can also transfer that hydraulically to the driver's side as well. That way, just like a, a roll bar, um, you are able to uh, you know keep the car flat in the corner. It's a, it's a pretty cool system. Uh, the only problem with the uh, overall design of the system is, well, there's two really. The, the hydraulic or the accumulators do eventually fail. The bladders eventually go out. It seems to be like every four or five years. Um, and also there are braided hydraulic lines that allow fluid to you know make bends and things like that that often leak. Okay, and on the Rivian's case, the hydraulic lines that go to each shock are actually one of the lowest points on the truck and it's a four x four that you know is advertised for its excellent off-road capability but you have these flimsy little lines that you can if you pull on them you can bend them uh, as one of the lowest components of the vehicle so of course they leak and Rivian it does not have the best service center set up at the moment so this machine that we're going to give you has adapters for Rivian and for McLaren you can do both you just swap out the machine uh the the the, hand, the end section, we'll show you that in a, in a moment. And uh, they're all spring-loaded and locked so that they, they will not leak. Maybe a drip will come out. And that's very important because 
Uh, this flu is extremely caustic. The manufacturer uh, war uh, uh, repair manuals specifically say if you get it on paint, plastic components, wiring harnesses, immediately it needs to be cleaned off. Uh, so it's very important that you keep your work area clean of this fluid and you keep it off of your clothes and hands and off of the carbon fiber, the carbon ceramic brakes, or in the case of the Rivian, just the paint and the plastics that are around it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you why it's important that you have a properly bled system. Um, air is not, is very compressible, obviously. Fluid is not. So when you have a system with no air in it, other than what's in the um, accumulators, which is controlled and contained, then you have a very sharp and immediate uh, transfer of pressure through the fluid as it's designed. And when you get air into it, now you have uh, some compressible air that gives a variability and a little bit of a delay in what the car wants to see happen. Now, you can do the accumulators, as you've seen other YouTubers say on the McLaren, by just spinning them off and putting new ones on. But then there is air trapped at the top. And it's just a little bit of air. Yes, it's not a big deal, or so you might think. But it is a unknown the car is not able to detect. And it is going to give you a little bit more play than what is designed. Uh, and it can aerate into the fluid and cause then boiling of the fluid, which then can deteriorate the fluid or the components in it. Um, but primarily, you're going to get just a softer feel, and uh, you may not necessarily know about um, about that going on. Now, in the car with the hydraulic lines, obviously, when you remove those, a lot of fluid is lost, so you need to fill it. And uh, this, we're going to go through how to do that. Now, maybe you remember where I said the guy was asking, why can't I do one accumulator at a time? A vacuum, while it's strong, it can draw its maximum vacuum capability and still have air trapped inside the system. That's because each one of these systems terminates at the shock. And even though there's two lines, they are not necessarily connected. So that means if there's air up in the line and then there's fluid down low and you run a vacuum, that air may stay trapped in there because you can't withdraw the fluid from the system unless air can flow through it. So this is why each time you try to bleed your system, the fastest way to do it is put it on the lift, take off all four wheels, and then run the machine and, and loosen the accumulator until you hear air flowing through it at each corner, one at a time, and you monitor the clear lines that we've given you to, so you see no more fluid flowing. This may be a drop or two, but no more like streams of fluid, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the tool. Uh, one thing we're gonna talk about is how to initially use it when you first get it. You'll need to fill the fluid. Uh, that's easily done right here. You just uh, pour the fluid directly into this uh, top portion right here. And then you'll need to bleed it so that you see like right here, we have no air in those lines. See, there's no air there, there, or there. Um, now we have air here. There's, we'll explain that in a minute. It doesn't matter over there. All right, first time you're using it, what you're gonna do is you're going to put fluid in here. I like to use seven quarts. Uh, you'll open this to the atmosphere. And at that point, uh, you'll have this valve closed. You can open this valve to the vacuum chamber. Open the valve here to the vacuum pump. Make sure your lid is securely in the center. There's no area around it for the air to escape. Turn on your pump and that will draw a vacuum. Once you see that vacuum stop going down, you can go ahead and close off the valve there to the, um, to the vacuum. You can close off your valve to the vacuum now, uh, the, to the resin trap. Now all of this will be under vacuum. Then you can open this valve and it will boom, fill this and you'll see no air. It will be a vacuum filled system. Just further proof that you know this is how you fill a system and get air out of it. This is only the first time you need to use it. Although if you do ever re-inject air into that line, you'll need to do this process again. Very easy process, okay? Now as far as how to use it with the car, um, you'll close this. This will be bled now. Then after that, whatever happens over here, don't worry so much about. Um, we will go ahead and connect your connectors to the car. Uh, that's very easy. This T will go to the nearest connector. This one will go to the far connector. Plenty of slack to work it around car components. Plenty of slack to get your line out from under the car and to your machine. You'll connect the other end of the machine to here. Once you have that connected, you can open this, which will relieve the pressure from the car if there is any, 
and it will dump fluid into your trap there, okay? That will relieve the pressure. It won't evacuate the system. It will just relieve the pressure. Uh, if there's no pressure in the system because you have a fault on the dash, then you know nothing may happen when you open that valve to the resin trap. At that point, you will go ahead and open the valve to your vacuum pump, turn on your vacuum pump, um, and then it will begin trying to draw a vacuum on the car. Again, there's fluid in the car, so there will not be a perfect vacuum drawn or, or near perfect vacuum drawn. Uh, at that point, you need to allow air flow through the system to get the fluid out of the lines. So just go to each corner. In the case of the McLaren, you just go to, um, let's say the driver front one first and do whatever you want. I don't care what order you do it in, but I usually go to the driver front one. And then I spin off the accumulator. You can hear the air rushing through at that point. The, the, the vacuum will then start pulling fluid. You'll see the line kind of vibrating and shaking. You'll see fluid getting sucked through the line. Uh, just keep running the vacuum with that accumulator off until you stop seeing flows of fluid. Maybe a couple drips will be there. A, there may be some in the lines, but no more really fluid flowing. At that point, you go put your new accumulator on or if you're doing a line repair or whatever, put your old accumulator back on, tighten it down. Then you move to the front passenger uh, accumulator and then rear passenger, rear driver. It doesn't really matter the order that you do it in. You're just trying to get all the fluid out of the system. In the case of the Rivian, um, you can do it by taking the hydraulic lines off of each corner of the shock, put a bucket under the shock, take the retaining torques. You'll see the two lines are held in by a little plate with the torques in the middle. I believe, or maybe Allen's on each line. Disconnect the, the lines, pull them carefully out of the shock. Some fluid will drip into your bucket. The majority of it will get sucked into this uh, trap down here. Um, once you stop seeing fluid flow through it and you've got good air flow through there, reconnect the lines. Just be careful not to damage the Teflon seals or the O-rings. If you do damage them, replace them. Teflon O-ring goes uh, to the outside, the O-ring goes on the inside. If you don't have the Teflon O-ring, it may not leak, uh, but if you put it in the highest performance mode, it will leak, okay? If you try to like double up O-rings or whatever, you, you need to have that little Teflon ring there, okay? Um, once you have done all four corners, with the vacuum still on, tighten everything up, make sure, and then you'll start to see this little gauge start to go to uh, a higher and higher vacuum, okay? Once it gets to where the needle no longer moves, um, you have gotten the air out of the system. Okay, you don't need to sit there and let it draw a vacuum forever. If you wanna do that, I'm sure it'll be fine. But um, once you have that vacuum and that needle stops moving, you can go ahead and turn off that valve, which disconnects the system from the vacuum pump, then turn off your pump. That needle should not go down. If it's going down, you have a large leak somewhere. Now, if it doesn't move, it doesn't mean you have no leaks in your system. You will not be able to draw a vacuum nearly as strong as the pressure the system operates in, especially when it's in the track mode for the McLaren or its most dynamic mode for the Rivian. So you may have no movement from this needle and still develop a, a leak once you recharge it. So make sure you're careful with your lines. You've diagnosed your problem properly, replaced all the parts that you needed to. Um, and while it's sitting there, I like to take this time to go ahead and top off the, the reservoirs. In the McLaren, it's in the front trunk. Uh, there's a power steering reservoir. You may want to change the filter on the power steering system at this time. But, um, you know, just make sure that the reservoir is three quarters of the way full or whatever the manufacturer recommends. Make sure there's fluid in the reservoir. For the Rivian, it's under the rear bumper cover, just behind the passenger wheel. Um, there's like a plastic case with these little alligator clips you got to pop off and super annoying, but you just don't want to have low fluid in that reservoir because if you go through the process of evacuating all the air and then there's no, there's a low fluid in the reservoir, once the car turns its pump on and tries to increase pressure, if it injects air to the system, you'll be doing the bleed all over again. So just check the fluid. Uh, if you're a shop, charge for the time. I mean, you, you can, the, the labor on this job, you know, you can do three, five hours of labor. And if you're doing them regularly, you can get your time cut down on that. Um, but so, you know, charge appropriately. I mean, McLaren's charging a lot of money for this service. Okay, so um, 
once you have chopped up the reservoir, come back, check your gauge. If you're still, you haven't moved any, then you're gonna be good to go ahead with the fill procedure. So we're gonna go back to our valves. We're gonna turn off the valve. We're gonna close this valve to the resin trap. So now this is all in vacuum. The car is under vacuum. And we will open the valve to this, which will then, you'll see the fluid will fill all the lines um, and there'll be no air in there. If you see air again, you've done something wrong. There should be no air in this, in this hose or these hoses. Uh, and then the car will have no air in it. Now, as far as, uh, are you good to go? Well, no, if you want to use no computer, like to generate pressure in the system, if you just want to turn the car on and be good to go, you'll need to interject, interject some pressure. So at that point, I usually, uh, close this valve here hook up our shop air. I make sure this is turned down, you know, to the lowest setting, hook up our shop air and then dial this up. I like to get to about 80 PSI. Uh, everything in this system is rated to 200 PSI or more. So if your shop air is less than 200 PSI, you can just hook air straight to it, but it's just, you know, a lot of noise and pressure. I, I just like to go with the 80 PSI. That's all that the car is really looking for. So you'll hook up your air, turn this until you see 80 PSI here. And as long as you have this valve open and fluid in there and connected to the car, now your car is at 80 PSI. So at that point, you can come over here, close this valve here. Now you have 80 PSI in here in the car. Um, disconnect your uh, connections to the car uh, and then come back over here. I close this valve, turn this back down to zero, disconnect my shop air just so that air doesn't come rushing out and hurt my ears. Then open this valve, raise this until you start to hear air flowing. Let all the pressure out of this system. Again, if you have this closed, this line won't lose its fluid. It's down here under the fluid level. So the air will just come out the top. The fluid and this line will stay bled. Once that stops rushing out, go ahead and close this. Um, as long as this is all full of fluid and there's no, and you leave this closed, you can go ahead and reopen this to relieve the pressure from the adapter and the lines. And as long as you see no air go back in here, which you shouldn't, you close this up and then disconnect your adapter. No fluid should be leaking from that. You can put your adapter down back in the bottom. Um, and you are good to go. Now, like I said, I like to, with this closed, draw a little bit of vacuum in here, open that valve, let it get up to like, you know, right around here, close it back up, turn your vacuum pump off. That way the lid will stay tight on there and won't come off when you're pushing around the shop, someone kicks it, whatever. Um, and then that's it. And then your machine's ready to use for the next time. It's super easy. It's, you know, with the number of Rivians out there and the number of McLarens out there that constantly need these services and accidents, any body shop that works on those vehicles, or any kind of uh, mechanic shop that does suspension repair, you just gotta have one of these tools. Make one if you want. If you don't wanna buy mine, make one. Um, there's no reason you can't make it. Or if you wanna buy mine, it, it just takes time and it's we have these CAD prints and everything and keeping them in stock, keeping the inventory, I think it's a fair market what we're charging um, and it's cheaper than you can get it anywhere else. So, and you don't need a computer. Uh, with the Rivian, you may need to do a hard reset. We'll leave the instructions on how to do that in the description. On the McLaren, if you disconnect the battery while you're doing all of this, when you reconnect and start the car, it will start right up. As long as you're off the lift, if you're on a lift and it won't go down, uh, you know, it may say there's other suspension faults, but, and then you may need to clear it with an Altel, Texa, dealer, computer, whatever. But as long as, you know, once you, uh, have the car finished back on the ground, lift arms out from under it and you connect the battery, start it up. It should be good to go.